So, uh, Jerome O'Shaughnessy, Jerome Holmes, men and women of the Sea Wits, it's uh, been truly an honor, a profound honor, to lead the men and women of Konar First Air Force aft north in our portion of the Homeland Defense Enterprise. I cannot emphasize enough how impressed I have been with both the proud heritage and the commitment to our Homeland Defense mission. I was reminded on a daily basis of the fantastic military relationships we have with our allies and our partners, north and south of our borders. To our Canadian detachment here, your service is professional, dedicated, nothing short of exemplary. And for that, I am extremely grateful. And I also appreciate the contributions of all of our components to this total force enterprise. We have worked hard to ensure that we are well aligned with our United States Northern Command, NORAD, and Air Combat Command leadership. And I have complete trust in your ability to continue to keeping the watch over the skies over North America. We are on an excellent glide path as an organization toward meeting the challenges that remain ahead. We have been fortunate, as General O'Shaughnessy says, to be operating in a unique period where all of our strategic guidance is aligned with homeland defense at the forefront. I believe we have moved the needle in meeting potential conventional threats we face from peer competitors and great power nations. CONAR is on track within a few years to have fifth generation fighters in its arsenal. We, can, we continue to add fifth generation capability on our fourth generation F-16 aircraft with ESA radar upgrades. The overall lethality of our joint air defense operations center has been enhanced by fire direction control computer upgrades and with the activation of an additional launch site. We advance our capability to identify, I detect, identify, and track targets with a JMAC system that is now operational. And we revamped our enterprises training and exercise program to include a greater emphasis on the high-end fight and our ability to deploy and sustain tailored combat packages to the high north. There remains much to do, but we have taken steps and have a path forward to contribute to our combatant commander's guidance of a layered sensing grid for domain awareness, adaptive architecture for joint all-domain command and control, and new defeat mechanisms. General Holmes, I appreciate, I appreciate you going through some of the things we've managed to get done over the past year. Clearly, uh, it was the men and women of the team who made all that happen. I just happen to be lucky enough to, guy to, to be the guy sitting at the head of the table. I'm not going to go through all of them, but we did face some enormous and historic challenges. As we already talked about in the wake of Hurricane Dorian, we were honored to assume critical leadership responsibilities on behalf of NORTHCOM for DOD's foreign disaster relief efforts in the Bahamas in support of the U.S. Agency for International Development. Following that hurricane season, we turn our focus to bringing uh, the future faster. In February, we issued our 20 to 22 strategic plan, which has set the foundational groundwork to guide our operations, activities, and investments over the next several years. First and foremost, it communicates the primacy of our homeland defense mission, and is also the mechanism by which we will manage organizational reforms to include AFOR and AOC alignments, as well as a review of component staffing requirements and the advocacy required. In order to rectify an F4 staff training deficiency, we planned for and executed our first ever component numbered Air Force Academy in just a few short months. We have already taught three week long courses and we're gonna incorporate the Academy as a formal part of our newcomer orientation program. And now, as you all know, we found ourselves not only in a great deal of social unrest, but we're also battling through the first global pandemic in over hundred years. We took active, early, and aggressive steps to protect the health and well-being of our personnel and our families, and to maintain our ability to execute the mission with zero risk in key areas, as General O'Shaughnessy already discussed. Not easy to do, but it requires leadership and focus at all levels, starting at the very top with a combatant commander. We helped relieve a stressed healthcare system and saved American lives by supporting airmen on the front lines in New York medical screeners in the White House by deploying unprecedented number of emergency preparedness liaison officers to every FEMA region, and by employing an effort by the Civil Air Patrol not seen, not seen since World War II. Amazing teamwork with our sister components, and again, for that I am thankful. 
Before I close, I would like to thank you, General Shaughnessy. It has been an honor being your Air Component Commander. You have been a steadfast, relentless, and vocal promoter of our homeland defense mission. And our nation and Canadian partners are and will remain in your debt. And I truly mean that. Best wishes for you and your family in retirement. Thank you, General Holmes. It has been an honor serving as your first Air Force Commander. I've learned a great deal, and I sincerely appreciate you and your staff's tremendous support and advocacy in helping us execute our mission. Your vision and statesman-like leadership for both the Air Combat Command and our Air Force have been extraordinary. Tick, welcome to you and Christy, Courtney, Kirk, Luke. You and I have known each other for many years now. As fellow DC Guardsmen and the way before that, over 20 years ago, flying together in Korea, chasing each other around. I know that I'm leaving this organization in great hands. I'm excited about where the command is headed, and I look forward to seeing you take even greater heights. I must say again how tremendously proud I am and thankful of everyone and what we've been able to accomplish during my brief service here with the men and women of the 1st Air Force, the centers, wings, groups, detachments, and sectors, our LNOs, and the staff that comprise our Homeland Defense Enterprise. Thank you all for welcoming Karen and I as part of this phenomenal team. I also sincerely appreciate the sacrifice and selfless support from the families and the loved ones for all those long days, weekends, and the travel that kept you all going. These sacrifices and continued support are the reasons why we have been so successful as a team. Thank you all for standing the watch. Homelands first. Thank you.